Hey everyone, you know while most factories are basic and uninspiring, there are some that do things very differently. From unusual projects to strange design concepts, join me, we're gonna tour the world to visit the top 15 most unusual factories in the world. Starting with number 15, the Slinky Factory, Pennsylvania. Originally developed in the 1940s by a naval engineer named Richard James, the Slinky, a simple helical spring, captivates minds with its graceful, almost mesmerizing movements. The story of the Slinky supposedly began when James accidentally knocked a spring off a shelf and watched it walk instead of just falling. This innocuous moment led to the development of one of the most iconic toys in history. The Slinky was first introduced in 1945 at Gimbel's department store in Philadelphia, where it became an instant hit. This success prompted the establishment of the original Slinky factory, but in 1964 the operation moved to Hollidaysburg, Pennsylvania, where it continued to thrive. The factory itself is a hub of activity where traditional manufacturing techniques are still employed to produce the toy. The process begins with a long steel wire which is coiled into the classic slinky shape. Each slinky is then inspected and packaged by hand, ensuring its quality before it reaches eager children and nostalgic adults. This dedication to maintaining the original manufacturing process is part of what makes the Slinky factory special. Over the years though, the Slinky has evolved with variations in color and size and even plastic versions, but the original Slinky remains the most popular. The factory produces hundreds of thousands of Slinkies each year and is a rarity in that it retains many of the original methods of manufacture as opposed to incorporating new technology or machines into the process. Number 14, the Louisville Slugger Factory in Kentucky. The Louisville Slugger Factory in Louisville, Kentucky is an iconic place in the world of baseball and inseparably linked with the sport's rich history and culture. Home to the famous Louisville Slugger baseball bat, this factory is not just a manufacturing facility, but a sacred place for one of America's favorite pastimes. Founded in 1884 by J. Frederick Hillerich, the Louisville Slugger has become the bat of choice for generations of baseball players, from little leaguers to professional athletes. The story began when Hillerich crafted a bat for Pete Browning, a star of Louisville's major league team at the time, whose success with the bat led to its popularity. At that moment, the Louisville Slugger was born. The factory today is a mixture of both tradition and technology. Visitors can take a tour and witness the fascinating process of bat making, which combines state-of-the-art machinery with handcrafting techniques. This process begins with selecting the finest quality ash, maple, or birch wood, ensuring that each bat meets standards of strength and durability. And the wood is then turned, sanded, and branded with the iconic Louisville Slugger logo. Throughout the years, the Slugger has been embraced by some of baseball's greatest legends, including Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Derek Jeter. The factory also houses a museum that showcases the history of the bat and its impact on baseball. The museum features exhibits such as replicas of Babe Ruth's 1927 bat and the opportunity for visitors to hold bats used by baseball greats. As well as still being where bats are made, the factory has become hugely important to the local economy and the culture, employing skilled artisans and drawing thousands of visitors each year. Number 13, the Kohler Design Center and Factory, Wisconsin. The Kohler Design Center and Factory in Kohler, Wisconsin, not only shows the innovation and artistry in plumbing and furniture design, but also the rich history of the Kohler Company. Founded in 1873 by John Michael Kohler, the company originally produced cast iron implements for farmers, and it wasn't until Kohler enameled a horse trough to serve as a bathtub that the company's path forward, becoming a leader in bath and kitchen design, was set. The design center itself is a three-level, 36,000 square foot or 3,300 square meters space that serves as a showroom, museum, and gallery. The main floor features a wide selection of Kohler's latest products, offering a glimpse into the future of kitchen and bath design, and shows how the company likes to push the boundaries of what's possible in plumbing fixtures. On the lower level, the history of the Kohler Company is chronicled, providing visitors with the story of the company's evolution over the years. This area is a museum, displaying an extensive collection of Kohler products dating back to the company's earliest days, including the iconic clawfoot tub. The upper level is dedicated to the arts and industry program, showcasing an impressive collection of art created by artists who have participated in Kohler's residency program. This program, unique in the industry, allows artists to work with industrial materials and techniques, resulting in innovative and often surprising pieces. 
Next door to the design center is the Kohler factory, where visitors can take a guided tour to witness the manufacturing process. This tour provides a look into the complexities and precision involved in creating Kohler's products, from casting to finishing, with warehouses full of products destined for bathrooms around America. Number 12, the Transparent Factory, Germany. The Transparent Factory, known in German as Gläserne Manufaktur, is in Dresden, Germany, and it's one of the most impressive looking factories anywhere in the world. It's operated by Volkswagen, the state-of-the-art facility that uses cutting-edge manufacturing to produce some of the most well-known vehicle models on the planet. Opened in 2002, the Transparent Factory breaks the mold of traditional car manufacturing sites. Its design is a fusion of glass and steel, offering visitors a clear view of the production process within. This transparency is not just architectural, but also a metaphor for Volkswagen's commitment to openness and quality. The facility's primary function has been the assembly of Volkswagen's luxury and electric vehicles, showcasing the company's innovation in these fields. Spanning about 296,000 square feet, the facility's interior is serene and clean, far removed from the noise and grime you'd normally expect in a manufacturing plant. The floors are made of Canadian maple wood, and the assembly line itself is surprisingly quiet, reflecting the focus on electric vehicle production. One of the most distinctive features of the transparent factory is its position in the urban landscape. Unlike traditional factories, which are typically located in industrial zones, it's in the heart of Dresden. This location also makes the factory a significant tourist attraction, drawing visitors interested in technology, architecture, and the future of transport. Because of this, Volkswagen uses the factory to showcase technological advancements, particularly in the field of electric vehicles. And it's safe to say that as car manufacturing facilities go, you'll see and learn far more here than anywhere else, not just because of the transparent walls, but because of the complete sense of openness throughout. Number 11, the Alasur Olive Oil Factory, Chile. The Alasur Olive Oil Factory in Chile is unique in the way that it blends traditional craftsmanship and modern sustainable practices in the production of olive oil. Located in the Colchagua Valley, it's a region known for its fertile soil and ideal climate for agriculture. The Alasur estate spans over 6,500 hectares, with a significant portion dedicated to olive groves. This stunning setting is not just a backdrop, but a critical component in the production of high-quality olive oil. It was founded with a vision to produce world-class olive oil while maintaining a commitment to sustainability. Alasur has set new standards in this industry. These olives are grown using organic farming techniques, ensuring that the entire process from tree to bottle is environmentally friendly. The estate utilizes drip irrigation systems, which conserve water, and the factory itself is designed to minimize energy consumption as much as possible. The olives are hand-picked at their optimal ripeness to ensure the highest quality of oil, and once harvested, they're quickly transported to a state-of-the-art mill where they're cold-pressed. This method preserves the natural flavors and health benefits of the olives, and results in extra virgin olive oil of exceptional purity and taste. Alasur's approach to production is unique in its speed and efficiency. The time from harvest to pressing is kept to an absolute minimum, often within two hours, to ensure that the oil retains its freshness. The factory's modern facilities allow for a seamless, hygienic process with stainless steel equipment used throughout the production line. It's a perfect example of designing a factory within the setting of the raw materials it needs, and without being too much of a blot on the landscape. And unsurprisingly, it's been seen as the blueprint for the design of other similar factories around the world. Number 10, the Fiberline Factory, Denmark. Found in the city of Middelfart, Denmark, Fiberline Composites is a leading company that specializes in the development and manufacture of composite materials, particularly fiberglass and carbon fiber. These materials are renowned for their strength, durability, and lightweight properties, making them ideal for a wide range of applications. The cornerstone of their operations lies in its approach to a composite technology. The factory employs state-of-the-art manufacturing processes that integrate advanced material science with cutting-edge engineering. Their products have a wide range of applications. Their composites are used in the construction industry for structural components that demand high strength and low weight. In the energy sector, their materials are crucial in the manufacturing of wind turbine blades, contributing to the growth of renewable energy. And the automotive and aerospace industries benefit from these lightweight and durable materials, which contribute to increased fuel efficiency. One of the key aspects of Fiberline's success is its commitment to sustainability. 
Rather than being bulky and unappealing, this feels modern and streamlined. The factory worked closely with the local architect to create this design and insisted it be attractive and architecturally inspiring. Even though it looks more like style over substance, it was built with the production process in mind. So much so that the raw materials are delivered at one end of the building and the warehouses for the final products are at the other. There's a huge environmental focus, too, beyond a minimized impact on the landscape. And as well as using energy-efficient manufacturing processes and the incorporation of recyclable materials in their products, the factory itself is designed to minimize energy consumption and waste as much as possible. Number 9. The Marmite Factory, UK Communities around the world often find themselves having to contend with smells that have been released by a nearby factory. But there's a place in the UK where, for some people at least, the aromas they experience are the worst thing possible. The Marmite factory in Burton-upon-Trent is an important place in the British food industry, as it's where the popular Marmite spread is made. If you've never had it before, Marmite is a dark, thick yeast extract spread that's famous for its strong, salty flavor and is a byproduct of beer brewing. To some, it's the most delicious thing ever, and to others, it's disgusting, leading to the company's advertising slogan being, love it or hate it. The factory's roots can be traced back to the late 19th century, when the German scientist Justus von Liebig discovered that the brewer's yeast could be concentrated, bottled, and then eaten. And in 1902, the Marmite Food Extract Company was formed, and the first Marmite factory was opened in Burton due to high concentrations of breweries in the area. The choice of location was strategic, as large volumes of brewer's yeast from the local brewers were key ingredient in Marmite. Now, over the years, the Marmite factory has become synonymous with Burton-upon-Trent, contributing significantly to the local economy. The production process of Marmite has remained largely unchanged over the decades, preserving its unique taste and texture, with the yeast being collected from the breweries, heated and filtered, and then mixed with various ingredients, including salt, vegetable juice concentrates, vitamins, and some spices. This mixture is then aged in large containers where it develops its distinctive flavor. Famously though, when the wind is blowing in the right direction, the air over Burton takes on a familiar Marmite fragrance, which is either the best or the worst thing you can imagine, depending on how you feel about the spread. Number 8. Visota 239 Plant, Russia the Visota 239 plant, located in Chelyabinsk, Russia, is a vast and surprisingly ornate building, particularly as the product it makes there is hardly the most exciting of things. Officially known as the Ultra Heavy Plate Mill 5000, this facility, which is part of Chelyabinsk Metallurgical, produces high-quality steel plates that are used in various industries, including construction, shipbuilding, and energy. Established in the late 2000s, Visota 239 was designed to be one of the most technologically advanced steel mills in the world. The plant's name, Visota 239, translates to Height 239, which was chosen to reflect its incredible size and its height of the main building. One of the key features here is the ability to produce large, ultra-thick steel plates, which are essential for manufacturing heavy machinery and for use in some extreme conditions, such as in the Arctic shelf or in space. The plant's modern rolling mill allows for the production of steel plates with precision in thickness and in quality, meeting requirements of both domestic and international markets, as well as designing it in a way to improve employee well-being. Sustainability and environmental protection are central to the operations here. For this, the plant employs an industry-leading technology to reduce emissions and minimize its ecological footprint, and it uses energy-efficient systems too, as well as keeping to a strict code of environmental regulations. Moving on to number 7, HERS Snack Factory, Pennsylvania. Founded by James S. Herr in 1946, Herr's Snack Factory, which is in the heart of Nottingham, Pennsylvania, is a family-owned company that began as a small potato chip operation and has since become one of the major players in the snack food industry. Herr's is renowned for its wide range of snack foods, including potato chips, pretzels, popcorn, and cheese curls. From its humble beginnings in a small garage where James Herr first started frying chips, the Herr's Snack Factory has grown exponentially. The factory today is a state-of-the-art facility that blends traditional methods with modern technology. The company prides itself on using the finest ingredients and a meticulous cooking process, which has been refined over the years to meet the evolving tastes of consumers. The company has always been at the forefront of introducing bold and unique flavors, catering to a diverse palate. This innovative spirit is combined with a keen awareness of changing consumer preferences, including healthier snack options and environmentally friendly packaging. For those that love the products, it's possible to take a tour of the factory where you can see the process of snack production, from raw ingredients to the final packaged product. 
With specialized machinery to make the peculiar shapes needed for the snacks, you'll find things unlike anything you'll see elsewhere. With the aromas of all the different flavors wafting around, the tours are also a sign of how transparent the company is about its manufacturing process. Number 6. Mycoprotein Factory, UK there's a serious concern about the amount of meat that's produced to satisfy demand around the world and the consequences it's having on the environment. While completely quitting meat isn't realistic for most people, even a slight reduction by everyone would have beneficial effects, and there are plenty of companies trying to create something that can take its place. Corn is a British company that has produced meat substitutes for almost 40 years, but rather than making food from vegetables or artificially growing meat in labs, they take an unusual approach by cultivating mycoprotein, which is a protein-rich sustainable ingredient that's derived from a natural fungus. Developed in the 1960s and commercialized in the 80s, mycoprotein is produced through a fermentation process similar to that used in yeast bread. The Quorn factory, which is in the north of England, employs a highly controlled and sophisticated version of this process. The fungus Fusarium venenatum is fermented in large vats using glucose syrup as food, producing a dough-like substance that's been textured to resemble a fiber structure of meat. The facility's food production process is highly advanced, as the control environment ensures consistent quality and food safety, which results in corn products being versatile in a range of cuisines. This adaptability has played a critical role in corn's growing popularity across the UK and Europe. Sustainability is, of course, hugely important to the company, and no matter what you think of the taste, there's no denying it's less damaging than traditional meat production. The mycoprotein production process requires less land and water and produces fewer carbon emissions, which certainly aligns with the growing global concern over climate change and the impact of food choices on the planet. Number 5. The American Whistle Corporation, Ohio the American Whistle Corporation, which is in Columbus, Ohio, is surprisingly the only manufacturer of metal whistles in the United States. Founded in 1956, the American Whistle Corporation has been dedicated to producing high-quality, durable metal whistles for over six decades, and produces whistles that serve a wide range of purposes, from sports officiating and coaching to personal safety and law enforcement. What sets the company apart is not just its product, but its commitment to maintaining the entire process within the United States, ensuring control over quality and craftsmanship. The production process at the American Whistle Corp. is a blend of time-honored manufacturing techniques and modern technology. Raw brass is first brought into the factory, where it's precision machined into the distinctive whistle shape. The whistles are then plated with nickel to prevent tarnishing and ensure durability. What's really impressive is that each whistle is crafted to produce a consistent, high-pitched and penetrating sound, which is essential for the effectiveness of the product. What seems like a fairly simple product has an impressive number of different customers. Its whistles are not only popular among sports referees and coaches, but are also used by the U.S. military, law enforcement agencies, and emergency responders. Furthermore, they found a place in the realm of personal safety, where a reliable whistle can serve as an effective tool for signaling distress and calling for help. Even though it remains traditional, the company is committed to innovation, and the factory is where they'll try a number of different types of whistles. Over the years, the American Whistle Corp. has expanded its range to include various styles and designs, catering to specific needs of different industries and users, and special editions and customized engravings are also offered, making their whistles popular as commemorative items and gifts. Number 4. The Van Nel Factory, Netherlands The Van Nel Factory in Rotterdam in the Netherlands is a stunning example of industrial architecture and design, having been constructed at the peak of the Dutch modernist movement. Built between 1925 and 1931, this factory was originally designed for the processing and packaging of coffee, tea, and tobacco. And as well as being aesthetically interesting, it was virtually perfect from a functional perspective. The design of this Van Nel factory came from architects Johanna Brinkman and Leendert van der Vlucht, in collaboration with the factory's owner, Kies van der Loo. They envisioned a building that would break away from the dark, oppressive industrial structure of the era, and the result was an amazing complex that embraced light, air, and openness, all of which are characteristics seen as revolutionary for industrial buildings at the time. One of the most distinctive features of this factory is its use of steel and glass in its construction, allowing for a flood of natural light and creating a sense of transparency and openness. The factory's layout, with separate buildings for coffee, tea, and tobacco processing linked by aerial bridges, further improved operational efficiency while maintaining its sleek, modern aesthetic. This factory was ahead of its time in terms of both its architecture and its approach to employee welfare. The facility included additions such as a spacious courtyard, a staff cafeteria, and large windows offering views of the surrounding landscape. 
After ceasing its original operations, the Vennel factory underwent a transformation, becoming a hub for creative and cultural industries. Today, it houses offices for design, art, and media companies, continuing its legacy as a space that fosters innovation. This adaptive reuse has not only preserved the historical and architectural value of the building, but also infused it with new life, making it relevant in the contemporary context. As such an influential architectural design and having inspired generations of architects with its approach to industrial architecture, it's one of the few factories around the world that's been recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, showing just how unique it truly is. Number 3. The Volkswagen Wolfsburg Plant, Germany the Volkswagen Wolfsburg plant, located in Wolfsburg, Germany, is the largest car manufacturing plant in the world by area. Established in 1938, it's steeped in history and has played a pivotal role in shaping both the global automotive industry and the economic landscape of Germany. But not all is as it may seem. Covering a vast area of over two and a half square miles, or six and a half square kilometers, the Wolfsburg plant is virtually a city in its own right, complete with roads, a railway station, and the world's largest private sector industrial power plant. The plant employs around 70,000 people and has the capacity to produce over 3,500 vehicles per day across a range of different models. The history of the Wolfsburg plant is most famously intertwined with that of the Volkswagen Beetle, which became one of the most iconic cars in automotive history. Originally designed to be an affordable vehicle for the masses, the Beetle's production began after World War II. The plant played a crucial role in the post-war economic recovery of Germany, and over the decades expanded its production line to include other Volkswagen models, adapting to a changing market demand and technological advancements. The facility is renowned for its high-tech production process, including automated assembly lines, state-of-the-art robotics, and advanced logistics systems. It prioritizes the use of renewable energy, reducing water consumption, and implementing recycling and waste management programs. There is one major surprise about this factory, and the things that it makes. With all the advanced technology and production lines, you'd have thought that it mostly produces cars, but actually it makes far more of a completely different product altogether. Known as part number 199-398-500A, this isn't a car component or anything that's made in any other car factory, but still, Wolfsburg produces an estimated 6.8 million of them each year. That's because from the moment it first opened in a remote location, the site has also been producing food for its workers and visitors. And this particular part is actually a type of sausage. As many as 20,000 are produced in the factory each day, and this actually makes them Volkswagen's best-selling product by a clear margin. Number 2. NPO Energomash Plant, Russia Often, with steam and gas fogging up the main floor and with some of the tightest security you'll ever find around a factory, the NPO Energomash Plant, which is located near Moscow in Russia, has played an important role in both Soviet and U.S. history. The facility formerly known as the Energomash VP Glushko Scientific Production Association specializes in the design and manufacture of liquid propellant rocket engines. Founded in 1946, it's named after Valentin Glushko, a pioneering rocket scientist and a driving force of the Soviet space program. And over the decades, Energomash has developed a reputation for engineering excellence and contributing significantly to the advancements in rocket technology. The plant's most notable achievements lie in its development of the engines for a range of famous space vehicles, including the Soyuz, Proton, and Zenit rockets. Perhaps its most globally recognized contribution is the RD-180 engine, which was used in the United States Atlas V launch vehicles, being particularly renowned for its power and reliability. The company's expertise extends beyond just engine design to encompass the entire production process, ensuring that each component meets the highest standards of quality. The impact of this facility on both Russian and global space endeavors cannot be overstated. Its engines have powered hundreds of space missions, including satellite launches, interplanetary probes, and manned space flights. Beyond its technological and industrial achievements, it also has an important role in the worldwide scientific community, and it collaborates with research institutions and universities to help with the advancement of rocket science and training the next generation of aerospace engineers. Number 1. The Plus, Norway The Plus, which is located in Magnor, Norway, is a groundbreaking architectural and environmental factory, setting a new standard for sustainable manufacturing. Officially opened in 2021, it's the world's most environmentally friendly furniture factory, designed by the renowned architectural firm Bjarke Inglus Group for Vestra, which is a leading Norwegian manufacturer of urban furniture. 
The Plus represents a fusion of innovative design, eco-consciousness, and industrial functionality, and it's aimed to redefine the concept of a manufacturing facility in the 21st century. Spanning almost 70,000 square feet, the Plus is situated in a picturesque forest, blending seamlessly into the natural landscape. The facility's design is inspired by the Plus symbol, and it's made up of four main production halls the color factory, the wood factory, the assembly, and the warehouse. Each one radiates outwards from a central hub, and in this layout it not only optimizes the logistics and efficiency of the production process, but also minimizes the facility's ecological footprint. It's powered entirely by renewable energy, with the ambition of achieving a BREAM outstanding certification, the highest possible ranking for a sustainable building design. The Plus utilizes solar panels and energy-efficient solutions to meet its power requirements, and the use of local materials in construction reduces transportation emissions. Furthermore, the factory is designed to be a Paris Agreement-proof facility, aligning with the goals of the 2015 Climate Accord. The design of the Plus also emphasizes transparency and visitor engagement. Large glass windows allows visitors to observe the manufacturing process, creating a connection between the consumer and the production of goods. Sustainability at the Plus goes beyond its construction and energy use. Vestra's commitment to producing durable, high-quality urban furniture allies with the principles of circular economy and sustainability. The Plus also serves as a recreational space and biodiversity hotspot. The roof is accessible to the public and offers walking paths and green spaces, promoting community engagement and environmental awareness. The surrounding area is developed to support local flora and fauna, enhancing biodiversity and ecosystem health, with the hope that despite having built a huge manufacturing facility, the environment will recover around it and hardly be impacted in the long run. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.